The Sandia Mountains have been getting plenty of rain and snow lately, but the forests have long been vulnerable to drought and insect outbreaks. That's in part because the forests have become too crowded. As we learn on our land this week, forests aren't supposed to be as dense as they've become over the last century. And all those places that are covered with dead and dried out trees present a huge fire danger for the mountains and everyone who relies on them. If you know Albuquerque, you know the Sandias. They rise above the east side of the city, granite mountains topped with limestone that ignite to pink every sunset. The Sandias hold wilderness, springs, recreation trails, wildlife, but the forests here are increasingly vulnerable to drought, insect outbreaks, and fire. In a world that's warming, warming all the time, the Sandias are drying, and they are telling us to pay attention. On the east side of the Sandias and in the Cibola National Forest and basically the southwest in general, we have areas of forest that actually resemble historic conditions, but on a whole, we have density levels of trees that we just haven't seen. And so with that density level, the forest is really in an unhealthy spot. These forests looked different 150 years ago, before widespread grazing, before a century of fire suppression by the federal government, and before greenhouse gas emissions fired up our planet's atmosphere. If you go back almost only 150 years, what you would have seen was variable trees and varying densities. So you'd get into some areas that were really park-like, really big, open-grown trees with some underbrush and some younger trees that are growing in. And then you could go just over the next ridge and it could be a really thick, dense forest of ponderosa pine. So it was more varying 150 years ago compared to where it is now, where we're just seeing really dense forest stands across the landscape. Johnson says to think of the forest like a punch bowl full of straws. In the past, there were fewer trees fewer straws sucking up water. Each tree got to take a big drink. They could stretch and grow strong. In a dense forest, there are more straws. Each tree gets less water and is less resilient. And now, of course, there's another problem. Less water in the bowl. Things are getting hotter and drier. You know, the snowpack is much more variable. Um, it's not as reliable year to year. Um, you know, we've been in drought conditions. You know, these types of conditions really uh, stress out trees, and that makes them, of course, more susceptible to insects and diseases. And, you know, we've seen a lot of that here in the last five, 10 years here on the east side of the Sandia Mountains. In the last decade, insects like the Douglas fir tussock moth and the fur engraver have boomed in the Sandias, and their signs are everywhere. They've caused a significant amount of mortality. There's that elevational band of about one to 2,000 feet where we've seen all that damage. Um, and it's probably um, caused about 50% mortality of the trees there. As you're driving up the Sandia Crest Highway, you look around and you see, you know, trees that are either turning brown or are dead and have lost their needles already. Um, that's almost entirely the result of the Douglas fir tussock moth and then the fir engraver kind of working hand in hand tag teaming, if you will. Compound that with drought conditions, and it's, it's really not a very good combination. That combination, we know, is explosive for forests. If there were a fire to occur on the east side of the Sandias, I would expect we could see some pretty severe fire conditions, you know, similar to fires uh, that have happened to the south of us in the Monzano Mountains, also on the Cibola National Forest. You know, things like uh, most recently the Doghead Fire in 2016. We had Trigo, Big Springs, and Ojo Peak fires. You know, and those tended to start up near the crests. They were wind-driven, and they worked them their way downhill at, you know, really rapid paces and did a lot of damage. So I guess you could expect kind of the same thing here. In the worst case scenarios, there may not be a forest here due to the unhealthy nature of it right now. So if we had a fire, we could lose this entire mountain. If conditions are conducive and perfect to carry fire, we could lose this entire mountain in a matter of hours to days. However, if we continue to look for funding and opportunities to uh, actively manage the fuel conditions on this mountain in 20 years, 
the forest, there's a good chance it'll still be here. We may have some small patches that it may have burned. We may have areas that we did prescribe fire in. But if we uh, actively go in and remove trees and thin the forest and make it more resilient, in 20 years to 100 years, this forest could be as healthy as ever. In today's warmer world, the choices we make, the signs we pay attention to, they matter more than ever. For Our Land and New Mexico in Focus, I'm Laura Paskus.